battle over Don McGahn plays out. President Trump also pushing back, saying his attorneys are looking at the bigger picture. They're doing that for the office of the presidency for future presidents. I think it's a very important precedent. And uh, the attorneys say that they're not doing that for me. They're doing that for the office of the president. So uh, we're talking about the future. Let's bring in Brett Baer. He's author, uh, anchor of Special Report. He's author of many books, including, I think, another, <laughs> a new one that's coming out soon, which we'll, all, uh, we'll have you back to talk about. But right now, if we good. could talk about uh, this push, um, I want to maybe just paint a picture for people so that they understand. But the, the president actually is surrounded by some lawyers who actually worked um, to protect the office of the presidency in previous administrations, including Bill Clinton and also the George W. Bush administration. This is Emmett Flood, the lawyer that's there at the White House. I think that this is important for people to understand. This is not just a partisan thing. You have com people have different thoughts about the branches of government and the office of the presidency in particular. That's exactly right, Dan, and this is not uh, just this president. You would hear some of the talk from Democrats up on Capitol Hill and say this is very unique and unprecedented. It's not at all. And uh, you heard Catherine mention the Ben Rhodes testimony about Iran uh, that was turned down mm -hmm. by the White House uh, during the Obama administration. Then the uh, White House counsel, Neil Eggleston, said the appearance of a senior presidential advisor before Congress threatens the independence and the autonomy of the president, as well as his ability to receive candid advice and counsel in the discharge of his constitutional duties. Remember, that's President Obama's White House uh, mm -hmm. chief counsel with that letter to Congress. The other story that I want to get your take on, because you're there in D.C., and you can sort of feel when things are bubbling up, and this is whether Nancy Pelosi really does face a rift within her party about to, um, whether to um, uh, go for impeachment against the president. Listen to her uh, with an interview with Mika Brzezinski on MSNBC. Doesn't it put more pressure on you that a conservative Republican says the threshold for impeachment has been met? No. No? No. Why? Well, we have to, uh, we're not, this isn't about politics. It's not about passion. It's not about prejudice. It's not about politics. It's about patriotism. And it's about the presentation of the facts so that the American people uh, can see why we're going down a certain path. Brett, sometimes the live TV gods smile upon you. Uh, in my ear, dirt, while we were playing that interview, we just found out that Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, has called a special meeting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. with House Democrats in particular to talk about this very issue, impeachment. So I think I'm answering my own question. The mm -hmm. pressure is actually real. Real and mounting. And you have people like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez who are out every day with sound bites and tweets and, and pushing uh, impeachment. You have others mm -hmm. on the inside saying it is time. And, you know, Nancy Pelosi can say whatever she wants about, you know, laying out the facts. It, it, it's as if Democrats wanted to go down the road of committee hearings uh, to have an impeachment but not have an impeachment. Because the political gamble here is that you go down the road and it turns the other way on Democrats and uh, the public perceives they're just mm -hmm. obsessed with impeachment and not getting other things done. And it's quite partisan. If you look at the Fox News poll, I think we just released this last week, you see Democrats are a yes for impeachment at 72 percent, Republicans against it at 87 percent, Independents very much split. And I think that's why you see that's this interesting tension be that you have House Democrats that maybe feel this way. And I'm not saying their constituents don't, they probably do. But when you're covering the presidential race and you've, you're covering all of the candidates, they're not talking about impeachment when they're out actually trying to win the primary and hopefully for them, you know, they're thinking general election and impeachment is not in the, even in their top 15 issues. That's right. And they're not getting asked about it a lot. However, right. I will say more and more candidates, Dana, as you know, are starting to mention it to try to get oxygen. Remember, there's 23 candidates here and they need oxygen to get playtime on TV, you know, whether it's MSNBC talking about impeachment or CNN or whomever. Mm -hmm. And so you have more and more candidates like Elizabeth Warren and Eric Swalwell and getting out there and saying, I'm calling for impeachment. And suddenly their name is in a story or a soundbite. Well, I appreciate you coming on. To, that We have a little breaking news there. Speaker Pelosi calling for a meeting at 9 a.m. House Democrats to try to figure out what they're going to do on impeachment. I'm sure you will cover this on Special Report at 6 p.m. Yeah. Eastern. We'll watch you there. Thank you, Brett Baer. Thanks, Sam. And be sure to check out Brett's weekly podcast, The Candidates. This week, he and his all-star panelists analyzed Joe Biden's campaign. It's available for download on iTunes or wherever you listen. I listened this morning. It was very informative.